X2, oh man, where do I begin with this one? How about the fact that I can't believe this ride exists? Or, I can't believe it's been open since 2002? This roller coaster has been around for 20 years. That is insane. It's one of the only fourth dimension roller coasters in the world, the only one ever built by Aero. It's the ride that actually caused Aerodynamics to go bankrupt. After SNS absorbed all their assets, they did build two more. You have Dinoconda in China and Edge and Nika at Fuji Q. I've not been on Dinoconda yet, but I have experienced Edge and Nika. That's one that I actually liked more than X2. If you want to hear my full thoughts about that one, go check out that review. But in this video, I'll be focusing on the original. Original. This is Six Flags Magic Mountain's probably signature ride. I mean, they have 20 roller coasters, but this is the first thing you see right when you're driving up to the park. It is an icon and is an unbelievable ride experience that you will either love or hate. I feel like everyone has a different opinion about it and for a good reason too. So in this video, I'll be talking about all of the pros and all of the cons so that if you're going out there for your first time, you can know what to expect. But I mean, the bottom line is you probably are going to be completely blown away by everything. You're not going to know what to expect, even after I explain all this. The only way to truly understand this ride is to go out and experience it. And I don't say that about everything. Simply put, this ride is not for everyone. You can't just casually say, let's go ride X2. You don't just kick back and enjoy it. You know, this is something that you're actually holding on to. I can't think of a time I've ever actually put my hands up on this roller coaster. And that's because it's a workout. There is so much happening all at once. X2 is a battle. It takes so much out of you. I cannot believe that this roller coaster has a 48 inch height requirement. Little kids should not ride this ride. I cannot imagine if this was someone's first big roller coaster. It's too much even for me. So let's talk about what happens when you go to ride X2. First, this ride has its own dedicated area of the park. You take some stairs up to a pathway that goes off into its own little area and you enter your line and the line for this thing sucks. Operationally, X2 is a nightmare. Dispatches typically average about three minutes or more. Two reasons for this, the restraints and then the block zones. First, I'll talk about the blocks. The lift hill on this ride is not a block. They have to wait for the train to hit the first set of brakes at the end of the ride before they can send the next train. So even if you're fully staffed and have tons of employees on the platform to check restraints quickly, they still have to wait for the previous train to hit the final brakes. So that's probably why they don't staff this ride as much as they could. Because without that, I'd be like, you should need to put as many employees as you can on this platform because the restraints take a bit to set up. You have this mechanism that you have to pull down on so it lines up with your height and then you push your restraints inward and buckle up your seatbelt that way. So you're pretty in there, at least on the upper body. Lower body, you feel totally exposed. You're literally riding this thing and like your legs are like flapping around. There's no support below your waist. It's kind of funny. It really adds to that feeling of freedom that you get. Also, this is one of the few rides at Magic Mountain that you're gonna need to get a locker for your loose items. However, if you're with someone in your group that is not riding, they can still wait with you in the line and then just hang out in the locker area. This is a very interesting locker setup. I mean, first of all, don't bring anything on this ride with you in terms of loose items. This is not a roller coaster you wanna risk it for. You probably will lose everything. So unless you got like zipper pockets or something, put your items in a locker, it's like $1. And this is pretty interesting the way the station is set up. You enter and exit on the same side of the station, which means it is is also very easy to re-ride if there is an open seat because if that station is totally empty you can easily just hop back on. Now that being said I really do wish this ride had a single rider line. I think it would greatly benefit from it. This station is also cool because it usually has this really awesome animation playing to help set the mood although I've definitely been here when that was not working which sucks because when it is working it's so cool it really adds to the spookiness factor. When you roll out of the station you're facing backwards. A lot of people are confused when they board this roller coaster because the forward facing seats are actually at the rear of the train. This also means that you go up the lift hill facing backwards. The view you get from this thing is incredible. This is a freakishly tall lift hill. You see Tatsu, the entire park out before you. And because you're going up backwards, you also don't know when you're at the top. So you just keep climbing and climbing. Your max height is 175 feet, but your drop is 215 feet. It has an extra 35 feet on it because of the way X2 uses the terrain. It is called Magic Mountain after all, so naturally the park is on a hill. And this is one of those roller coasters that takes advantage of that. You slowly drop off the lift hill enter a little divot, and then your seats rotate. So you go from facing backwards to now where you flip, you're facing the ground. The first drop is absolutely nuts. Not only is it almost vertical, 
but so many rides, when you're facing the first drop, an angle like that, usually your feet are closer to the track. Your head is further up, but in this case, it's flipped, so actually your head is closer to the track and your feet are further away. It's a total reverse sensation, and it is so wild. Absolutely one of the best first drops in the world. And likewise, the bottom of this first drop is also insane. Because what happens is, when you start to bottom out there, your seats rotate, and now you start rising up into your first raven turn, backwards. So you're flying up high, not able to see where you're going, and that is a really cool sensation as well. X2 is the definition of disorienting. It'll take a couple rides to really get your bearings. So the train kind of levels out there at the top and you start gradually descending back down. So at the top of that element, you almost have like a moment to kind of process what's going on. And then you enter what is typically an airtime hill. This is like a parabolic hill, but in this case, you do a backflip. And that is epic. Such a sweet maneuver. Unfortunately, the next element to follow is the only dead spot on the ride. This is a turnaround that is just taken too slow. The rest of this ride has incredible pacing. I believe this turn is probably too high off the ground, or maybe it's too drawn out. If they tightened it up a little bit, maybe lowered the height, I don't think it would have had the same issue. That's why it's actually cool when you go out and ride something like Edge and Nika, because they totally fix all of the main problems that you have with X2. You know, any complaint that you have with this ride doesn't exist on that roller coaster. There's no dead spots on that one. From there, you go into another incredible element. This is a zero G shaped maneuver, but instead you're doing a backflip while moving through this transition and it is so wild you're facing forwards you flip and rotate you're facing backwards and then you enter your final main element which is a second raven turn and this thing i'm not gonna lie is brutal and that gets us to our biggest problem that we have at x2 and that is this is not the smoothest experience it's kind of a rough ride but not in the way you expect it's smooth the way the wheels like hug the track but the seats have a wobble to it you kind of rock back and forth because the seat rotation is not fluid. You know, it's probably only a little bit of movement towards the center of the vehicle, but naturally, when you're further away from the center on those, like, outside seats, you're going to be bouncing a lot more. The outside seats on X2 are a lot rougher than the inside seats. So for that reason, I definitely recommend sitting on an inside seat if it's your first time, or if you are a little bit more sensitive to rough rides. You'll probably enjoy the inside seat. Outside seat can be brutal. It is not going to be enjoyable for a lot of people. Now, I think that's what makes this tough is that's 50% of the seats on this ride. 50% are going to be really rough. But hey, I mean, some people like that rougher experience. I don't get it. I can tolerate it, but it is what it is. And after that raven turn, you then rotate back up, and now you're facing again backwards as you're hitting the brake run for you to then enter the station again. I believe that back row is better than the front row, but front row is very crazy as well. It's an awesome roller coaster by itself, but what I like is Magic Mountain designed it with the intent of dressing it up a bit. So they have onboard audio. So that's really cool as you're like going up the lift hill. Problem is, it doesn't work half the time. But when it works, it totally gets you hyped up. They also included a moment where fire goes off. As you can imagine, that also rarely works. So when this park is keeping up with this attraction, it is absolutely absurd from start to finish. But I can also totally see how your experience on X2 might not be so desirable. You might get off this thing and be like, that was one and done for me. And I think it's because, bottom line is, this coaster was so ahead of its time. I think if this thing were built now, in 2022, as of when this video is being made, people would be like, oh my gosh, this is like so innovative, it's so cool. But the fact that this came out back then, it's understandable why not everything is perfect. The best way I could describe X2 is, it is the best piece of trash you will ever ride. It's a roller coaster that has a lot of flaws, but man, it's so good. But don't expect this to be a roller coaster you can just marathon. On my most recent visit, I did it five times in a row without leading the train because there was no line. And I was so drained after the third ride. Somehow I kept going. By the time I did the fifth ride in a row, I was like, I need to sit down or I'm just going to like crash so hard. Which brings us to the final score. And this is one of those roller coasters that, truthfully, I don't know how to rate it. I feel like I almost have to give two scores because depending on where you sit, Inside seat or outside seat is two completely different ride experiences. So inside seat, I'm going to go nine and a half out of 10. Outside seat, I'm probably going to have to do like a seven and a half. Like I kid you not, it's that big of a difference, especially on moments like that final Raven turn. Like I try to avoid sitting on the outside seats if I can. 
I know not everyone is that way. Some people don't mind at all, and that's totally cool. But I think for a lot of your average park goers, the likeliness that you'll want to re-ride, I think is dependent on what seat you're sitting in. I think the odds that you get off this thing and do not want to ever do it ever again is gonna be a lot higher if that person's first ride was in an outside seat. But regardless, you are in for one absolutely wild, insane ride experience, something that you can't get anywhere else in America. So let me know down in the comments below what you think of X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to stay tuned for more coaster reviews here at Coaster Studios. I'll see you next time.